we'll get into this topic pertaining to I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. That's the topic. We'll learn about Christ, our Lord and Savior. Learn about repentance, what it looks like. Because that's what Christ taught, repentance. And that's what we're supposed to be learning as Israelites. The doctrine of repentance. We're now, through the gospel, now point of the Holy Spirit, you see Israelites changing their lives in Christ. Because Christ said he came to save that which was lost. Christ was very compassionate, right? Right. Very understanding. See? So what we see today in Israel, and these little street teachings and all that, and these little camps, a lot of that's not of Christ. Okay? But we're going to learn and study and read about Christ, the Messiah. Okay, so we'll go to Deuteronomy 28. Because you got a lot of our brothers and sisters that call themselves non messianic They caught up into Islam. And they'll say, the ones that's in Islam, yeah, Christ uh, uh, existed. He was just a man that existed. But see, they really don't believe in Christ. Okay. And again, you got the non messianic Israelites. All they go off is what you call the Torah, law and the prophets, but don't understand that the prophets promoted Yahweh Shah, Jesus the Christ. So it's Deuteronomy 28. Let's get it. So this is the law of Moses. But we say the first five books that Moses wrote. Start from Genesis, ending with Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28. We'll read this last verse, the 68th verse. So we get some understanding. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. So from the uh, 15th chapter, right? Deuteronomy 28, 15. Make sure we got that right. We read about the curses, many of the curses that hit the true biblical Israelites, so-called black, so-called Hispanics, name a few. These curses would hit true Israelites and would identify this people as the children of God, the children of Israel. So one of the last part of the curses, this is the 68 verse, it said, The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way of I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. So Egypt represents bondage. So all the 12 tribes of Israel, because that's who Moses is talking to, our whole nation. All the 12 tribes of Israel will go into bondage again. Because we had just came out of bondage, out of Egypt. And we was in the wilderness for 40 years. And Jacob and his sons had walked down into Egypt. So this time when Moses is prophesying, he's letting the children of Israel know that we will go into slavery again, but this time by slave ships. All the 12 tribes will get sold in captivity or whatnot on being uh, brought to different areas on ships. It's not just talking about the transatlantic slave trade. That's just one part, see? You had a lot of Israelites that was on this side, deemed Indians and all that, Puerto Ricans, Brazilians, name a few, Tainos, all that, and was getting shipped throughout the waters, being sold. Okay? So let's read on. It says, and there, what the there would be? Egypt. Yeah. In Egypt. Meaning wherever the Israelites would be at, they would be in captivity. Bondage. You understand? They ain't talking about just America. See? It says, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So was it just the so-called blacks being sold on auction blocks or sold to the, to the Spaniards and <laughs> the so-called uh, European? No, you had a lot of so-called Indians and all that being sold also. Who do we think Columbus was? 
Pizarro, Hernando uh, Cortez. We forget about that history. So that just went down uh, 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 just to go down. <laughs> See, we would be missing the point, Israel. And what we reading here, we don't need no Hebrew. Right? This is the law and the prophets right here. Saying, there you shall be sold unto your enemies, whether it be the Babylonians, the Syrians, Persian, the Medes, Greeks, Romans, all up to Spaniards, the French, Dutch, <laughs> Italian, Portuguese. Okay, there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen, slave men, and bond women, slave women, and no man shall buy you. So it just said we would be, get sold. So then why turn around saying no man shall buy you? Okay, your brother said save you. Yeah, because, and he's, like he's saying, nobody's going to save us because the same person who is going to captivity is the only person who's going to get us out. I, I, I hear some of that. That's right. No man shall redeem us. Okay. No man shall redeem these 12 tribes out of slavery, okay? Only word, go ahead and hold that. Go ahead. No, I was saying, this, what they're saying, no man, Christ is the only one that's going to get us out of the situation that we're in. That's what we were talking about. Because all the 12 tribes would be in captivity. No carnal man would be able to redeem Israel oh, from under these curses. Only one brother. And who was Israel's redeemer? Christ. It would be Christ. That's what people be missing out in Deuteronomy 28. But because a lot of Israelites want to follow man and man's doctrine. Man's doctrine ain't going to help us. See? We, it's the condition we're in is spiritual. When we going to humble ourselves to Christ? Because if they had not made Sean's go down and break this down, okay, who, what man is supposed to redeem us? David? No. Isaiah? No. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, they missed the point. It's only one redeemer out of the nation of Israel that was spoken of in Deuteronomy 18, right? Deuteronomy. See? Which would be Christ, because Moses in Deuteronomy promoted Christ. So you never forget Christ, Israel. Christ is the answer. And what Christ taught, he brought one doctrine. He didn't come pushing five and six doctrines. He didn't come pushing camp movements. You understand? A lot of these so-called elders in Israel that's over these camps are casting spells on the people. You see? There's a lot of witchcraft going on. But it's, it, it, it's been prophesied already about how a lot of our people wouldn't really want to humble themselves to Christ. So they'll find themselves in these devil doctrines. Because they want to follow man instead of Christ, our Redeemer. He's the one that's going to get us out of this condition. But first he had to come teach repentance and down the cross for the same people that was under these, that's under these curses. You understand? So when you're going into Deuteronomy 28, you got to bring in Christ. <laughs> you know, that's how the prophets talk. And the apostles. So go to Isaiah 6. So since we know we Israel, Deuteronomy 28, that's fine. Okay. Now we Israel, what we got to do? Well, we got to be born again. And repent. And follow Christ. And get baptized at water. That's a part of repentance. Let's see. It's Isaiah 6. In one. All right. So it says this Isaiah six and one. We'll go to this these verses for a reason. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon his throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. 
So going to show you when Isaiah prophesied, were we still kings? Yep. Mm -hmm. Uzziah is a king of Judah. So during the time of Uzziah, who did Isaiah see? <clears throat> Brother Charles. A vision of Christ. He's seeing a vision of Christ. That's right. But to read this, you say, well, it don't say Christ. Well, we got to get to understand it, right? So it says, it, it said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, me exalted, and his train, me his head on long, glorious garments, filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphim. So the seraphims are mighty angels, okay, created by the Most High in Christ. Say, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face. And with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. So each seraphim had six wings. That's funny, huh? <laughs> the Lord could create anything, right? So that's how the seraphims look. Mighty angels, each one having six wings. So this don't get into this talking about flying objects. A lot of Israelites teach that stuff. Okay. So I know some of y'all, you know, when we talk about these doctrines, you probably never heard of them, but they out there. <laughs> they out there. So let's read on. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. So who is the Lord of hosts? Who are the hosts, first and foremost? Brother Z. The angels. The angels. Who's the Lord that's over the angels? Yeah, I was shy. Jesus Christ. So the seraphim is saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. So they show you the mighty angels, them seraphims was at work. Started the foundation started to rumble. And it was just smoke. Now I said, then said I, woe is me, this Isaiah speaking, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. So who did Isaiah see in the vision? Right. Jesus Christ. Say, so then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this have touched thy lips. So symbolically, this coal hit Isaiah's lips. So now Isaiah would be about speaking truth. Because what did Isaiah say? He's a man of unclean lips, dwelling amidst, amongst a people, meaning Israel, that would be unclean, right? So then it says, In thy iniquity, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. See? So Isaiah at this point right here was made clean altogether. Verse 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who shall go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. So in this vision, what is Isaiah doing? Interacting with the Lord in this vision. He like, send, send me. Send them to who? Israel. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. So what's being said? Who we've been talking about the whole time? That's why we was asking the question. We've been talking about Christ the whole time. See? In 6, whereas uh, Lord in uppercase letters, I was thinking that was the most high. Is that not true? This is going to be Christ. We're going to prove it. So, what does it mean? Hear ye indeed and understand not. See ye indeed and perceive not. Because again, who we've been talking about the whole time. Isaiah is prophesying or seeing in this vision 
during the time of King Uzziah. Christ ain't even walked the earth yet. Christ wouldn't even be born yet. <clears throat> Isaiah, in the spirit, he's prophesied how Christ would come forth with that gospel and how a lot of Israel during Christ's time, they would hear it, but they wouldn't understand it. And they okay. would see Christ, but they wouldn't perceive what he was doing. They wouldn't understand. So they would see Christ doing what? Miracles, mighty miracles. Right. But they wouldn't be, a lot of Israelites wouldn't be able to grasp that this is the Savior. Mm -hmm. Because Christ would have them blind. It would be the same thing today. Christ's power working on this earth, just like it was doing at that time when Christ walked. See? So it go to show you the Lord have power to shut us down. We won't even know it. And we'll be thinking we're doing what's right and actually be going off. That's right. So let's read on. Verse 10. Make the heart of this people fat. And make their ears heavy and shut their eyes. You see that? Lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. So where do you think Israel's healing going to come from? Christ. Well, we've been talking about Christ the whole time. So what does that mean? It's going to come through Christ. What does that mean? You're right. Because <clears throat> okay. what would have to happen for Israel to get healed? To repent. Israel has to repent, right? And mm -hmm. do what else? Be baptized. Be baptized. What else? To receive the Holy Spirit. And believe in Christ. You got to throw faith in there. Because a lot of Israelites ain't going to believe in the Christ of the Scriptures. That's why we've been talking about the non-Masonic Israelites, Muslims. Got a lot of our people into the mainstream religion. They'll scream Christ. But when you start bringing out the Christ of the scriptures and what he taught, things change. See? Things would change. So that healing comes from us believing in the gospel. That's the hearing the message of Christ, repentance. And believe in this the Savior that walked and died on the cross and is alive as we speak. We got to believe that. We got to believe he came and did mighty miracles. Still doing the day. That's right. Being compassionate and waking us up. <laughs> so that's Isaiah who promoted the gospel right there. Promoted Christ. Go to Isaiah 53. And we'll see what Isaiah said again. So this is what we're supposed to be learning about, Israel. We're supposed to be learning about Christ, our Lord and Savior. Didn't he not say, come unto me and learn of me? Mm -hmm. Too much of this Illuminati doctrine. Too much of this Alex Jones prophet, CNN prophets. <laughs> we got we got to deal with the Lord and Savior. The Most High said, Hear ye him, the Son of God. So this is Isaiah 53 and 1. Same prophet, right? Mm -hmm. Say, Who have believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? So again, Isaiah is being prophetic of Christ. But who would believe in what the prophets promoted in regards to the Messiah? That's why you got that word believe in there. That's what you want to highlight. See? It said, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. And as a root out of the dry ground. He have no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. See that? So this, Isaiah ain't talking about the facial features of Christ, where he would look like, you know, unattractive. It's talking about, for many wicked Israelites, when the, when the true Messiah would walk the earth, he wouldn't be to their expectation. 
you have a lot of wicked Israelites hating on the Lord and Savior. And they will be up to no good because they are filled with pride, envy, ambition, covetousness, hatred. That's right. Emulation. All that stuff will be blocking them out. <clears throat> See? So we're going to come back to this Isaiah 53. Now let's go to John 12. So we get the brother here had a question in regards to did, did, did Isaiah, because we got to think about it, did he see the most high or did he see Christ in the vision? So they're going to show us that Christ was ready, brother, back then to come on the earth and fulfill prophecy. <laughs> so this is John 12. John 12 and 35. Said, then Yahweh Shai said unto him. So now the brother's on the scene. <laughs> right? Right. So he's talking to Israel. Yet a little while is the light with you. So this is John 12, 35. Why did Christ say that? What is he talking about there? Who is he calling himself, Jay? Christ. Yeah, what is Christ calling himself? Light. The light. See? And why did he say, yet yeah, a little while is the light with you? Because at this time he's going to have to be crucified, crucified and be taken away and raised again. So that he's not going to be able to walk with them anymore. So exactly, he's going to suffer at the hands of wicked men, according to the scriptures. See? According to the scriptures, the Messiah will have to suffer first before his resurrection and ascension. A lot of Israelites didn't understand that. They had the scriptures. They, they were saying, see, out of the law it's written that Christ liveth forever. That's true. But they didn't understand that the Christ has to go through the sufferings for Israel first, according to prophecy. Say, walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. You see that? So when we had that spirit of darkness on us, first of all, we ain't following Christ and his teachings. <laughs> then what, what state are we in? Darkness. 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 We're blinded. That's why we be hard on them devil doctrines, right? It ain't personal. Devil doctrines, we having a lot of our people blinded. To the point where we had no direction, we can't really even see ourselves. You see what Christ saying? So we can we can raise our hands and say, "I don't believe that." What did Christ say? And we in that darkness, we ain't gonna be able to see ourselves. We're gonna try to we can justify our wickedness. See, the ones that love you, you dog out. The ones that love you, you use. See? That's darkness. That's darkness. See that? And a lot of these Israelites was walking in darkness, having the scriptures, Israel. Knowing their nationality, right? Right. Knowing Hebrew. Right. But still would stumble at who? Christ. Christ. See what well, we gotta keep promoting Christ to our people. That's what it's about. <laughs> we gotta figure it out like wow wait a minute this truth is about the most high in Christ it has nothing to do with man so let's read on while ye have light believe in the light that you may be the children of light remember when Paul was going the scriptures with the epistles of Paul he was talking about how we supposed to be the children of light. We ain't supposed to be in that darkness. We supposed to preach against the darkness now because we're being born again. That's what Paul then was talking about to the church. We we have to we have to change as a people. See? So they say these things spake Yahushai or Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. So you see how Christ was? 
He'd get to the point, bring out the word, bam, 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 and be out. <laughs> See, a lot of Israelites love to know good, man. Read on. But though he had done, so I'm reading on, but though he had done so many miracles before them, Christ did great and mighty works before the world, before Israel. But though he would do those mighty works and miracles before their eyes, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who have believed our report, and to whom have the arm of the Lord been revealed? So did Isaiah speak of Christ? Yeah. <clears throat> what scripture is that? That was that John the Apostle is pulling in, in the gospel. Charles? Isaiah 53 and 1. Isaiah 53 and 1. And what was Isaiah talking about? What's the answer? Oh, he was talking about Christ. What you mean? He was bringing forth the report that they would reject Christ. Okay. They Anybody would... else? Sorry. Let the scripture aid you. You there? What Isaiah 53 and 1 speak about? The answer is there. Huh? You just let the word fight for you. And they wouldn't believe. Uh-huh. What is what Isaiah said? Keep going. Why? Even though use the word. What 37 say? Um, but but um but throw, but though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who have believed our report, and to whom the arm of the Lord been revealed. Right. So what was Isaiah prophesying about? Christ doing what? The miracles in his power, right? Uh huh. And even him doing that, many Israelites would, wouldn't what? Believe. Wouldn't. They wouldn't believe. That's it. That's the answer. 37 is your answer to Isaiah 53. The apostles breaking it down for us. See? To the point we ain't going to have to struggle. Man, let the word speak. <laughs> the Bible is powerful within itself. The other man gonna come out the word and say what that mean is see he was ugly and austere and start talking some other stuff and Israel will be like ooh ah that's deep <laughs> no that's satanic Z question could we also use uh, uh, Isaiah six and ten we ain't done yet oh, brother we talk about what did what that that verse right there meant Isaiah fifty three and one right what does that mean it means that they, they, they don't understand. They couldn't, the price had to shut down. That they didn't esteem him because what's Where it say that? They didn't esteem him. I went back to Isaiah 53. Before he shut, verse 2, verse 2 and 3. What did, uh, what did John 12, 37 say? 12 and 37 says, but, <clears throat> but, though he had, but though he had done so many miracles before them, yet that he believed not on him, Yet they believe not on him mm -hmm. that the that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, the Lord which had believed our report, and to whom had the arm of the Lord been revealed. Right. That's Isaiah 53 and 1. Right. So what Isaiah 53 and 1 is prophetic of? It's the same thing we read in John. Uh, St. John's. John what? John chapter 12, verse 37. That's the answer That's right the there. 37. 38 go with 37. 38 is just letting us know what Isaiah was saying. So Isaiah was saying that even though Christ would come and do so many miracles before Israel, many of them wouldn't believe. That's, that's the answer right there. You see. Everybody clear so far? Uh, Jesse. So it, John 12 and 30, 35 is the precept, but Isaiah 53? Oh, Isaiah 6 and 10. Isaiah, Isaiah 53 and 1 is the answer to John 12, 37. We get into the next verse. And then we'll see where we're going. You're right. Okay. 
So verse 39, right? That's where we're at now. Everybody clear so far? <laughs> All right. So now John 12, 39. Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, what again mean? Sounds simple. It is. <laughs> Meaning Isaiah spoke again of something that's going to pertain to the Messiah. Right. He had blinded their eyes. Right? And hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I shall heal them. Now, you care what scripture is that? This is why we're taking it back so we can get my brother's there. Which one is that? That the Apostle John is quoting. Okay. This is what it's about. See? We learn in these scriptures. Because we already went there already. So we went to Isaiah 53 and 1, and it was a verse we went to, a scripture we went to before that. It would be in Isaiah. Isaiah what? What chapter? Six. Isaiah the sixth chapter. So now remember the question was, did Isaiah see the most high or Christ? So then it said in verse 41, these things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. So who did Isaiah see in the vision? It had to be Christ. It had to be Christ. Will we get the answer? See? So where did healing got to come from? Us believing in Christ and that gospel. See? Then that healing takes place because we all got that sickness. You see? So Isaiah was prophesying of having the gospel and letting it be known though the Messiah would come and do many miracles, speak the word, the gospel. A lot of Israelites will get blocked out. They wouldn't believe in the Messiah. Is that spirit on the earth today? Mm -hmm. See? So what we was trying to do, Israel, not make it hard, just stay with the word. See what I'm saying? And just take it from the top and just move on down like we did. That's all. That's all. So we got to make sure we believe in Christ. The Christ of the scriptures. The one who walked the earth and did many miracles, man. And was very compassionate, right? And he, he worked with Israel, brother. See? So let's go back to Isaiah 53. So even though he, he would be compassionate and kind and approachable, a lot of Israelites would despise him. You understand? <laughs> he would be set at naught by a lot of so-called elders and religious leaders in Israel. All right, so Isaiah 53. In three. So it says, He is despised and rejected of men. So the he, is that talking about how Israel would be despised as a nation and rejected of men? No. Or is the he talking about a single individual? Single. Single. But for a lot of our people, again, that don't believe in the Messiah, even though Daniel, the ninth chapter, talk about the Messiah, right. they can't see that. That this is talking about Christ. Why do you think that is? Because he... Right. And they hard, they hard. That's right. The Lord got them blinders on. So it go to show us that we supposed to be reading the thing and say, man, we can be blinded. We was there. We was there. Look at us, Israel. 
into Christmas and all this other stuff. Weren't we there? Into mainstream religion. So should we be looking down on our people and being impatient with them and ah, ah. Was the Lord like that with us? Do we miss that and become proud and we still learning? <laughs> and we have a lot to learn. But we want to make sure we not hating Christ. Because we could easily do it by the way we deal with others. You see? So I say, he is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. What does that mean? Pertaining to your Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He's going to be the one to take our sorrows away. So he would be the one, say it again, that will walk. He will walk to take, our, take the burden of our other people. He's going to carry that. What you mean? He's going to die when he die when he die. When he, Matthew eleven twenty eight. Okay. Well, come unto me, <laughs> help us heavy, out, brother. Come unto me, the heavy laden and burden, and I'll give you. I'll give you rest. He's the one that's gonna give us that rest. He's gonna carry all our pains and sorrows. What is? I, 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 I just need more. I hear what you said. Well, Isaiah's prophesying about how when the Christ will walk, what would he do? He'd be healing, more miracles. Okay. It's because we would. What would make us sorrowful and have the grief? He would show us our sins. <laughs> All right. What condition was Israel in? Would be in a bad place. <laughs> we throw up. <laughs> See, who else want to help the brother? He on the in there. Well, we just wanted some more of the clarity of it. What would what would bring the sorrows in, or what what would cause the sorrows and the griefs? Brother says sin. What else? Sicknesses. Okay. Illnesses. There you go. How many of us get sick and have ailments and it would be grievous and cause sorrow? So what will Christ do? Heal. Heal the sick. Heal the blind. Okay. There you go. That's love and compassion. One would have understanding. So how are you going to hate on this brother that's kind and compassionate like that? What's happening in Israel? Y'all brothers teach weak. This Christianity in our list. You too soft, brother. How was Christ? Compassionate. That's All right. Suffering. There you go. There you go. Tender-hearted. Kind. Right? That's the Christ Israel of the scriptures. Anything else we seeing out there and we following, that ain't Christ. Talking about you can rape little girls. And lay with them at 12 and all that once they hit their psych. There's something wrong with you. That ain't Christ. Christ ain't never taught none of that. And ne never told his apostles to teach that stuff. Christ ain't told to teach the apostles they could lay with prostitutes. You don't think harlots follow Christ? Okay, you don't read about Peter and them popping them off and all this other stuff, man. <laughs> Here we go. Some brother they think he's a legend in his mind teaching Israel a devil doctrine because their doctrine is laced with fornication spirits. And that's why they talk about you can have seven wives and then call these wives the devil. Ain't that something? Oh, you know Eve, I. You want seven of them. See? Is that being taught in Israel? Yep. Mm -hmm. A lot of you know. See? It's foolishness. <coughs> so the brother was bringing it out, getting more clarity. That's all we're talking about. We want to see, okay, according to the scriptures, how would he be? And then when we read when he walked the earth, he would have to fulfill what's written, right? Mm -hmm. In order for him to be the Christ. Because if he wasn't the one that would apply these scriptures, then he would be a false messiah, right? right. So it says he would be acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. So with many Israelites, let's start with the false elders. 
would they be disrespectful to Christ? Yep. Mm -hmm. That they would have that spirit on. They would be highly disrespectful because what it means to esteem someone, to mm -hmm. reverence, mm -hmm. to respect. Mm -hmm. We supposed to be respectful, respect one another, man. Right? Mm -hmm. Christ would be this, man. To the point they knew he came uh, 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 born like you and I and all that, and they would call him a Samaritan. That's a disc. Because a lot of Israelites of Judea, they hated their people in Samaria. See? They would call him the devil, Beelzebub. That's a disc. See that? So when we highly disrespectful and, and condemning one another, looking down upon one another, Rising up on one another, that's disrespectful. That spirit is of this world. You see? That's something that has to come off of us. See? Let's read on. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. See that? What happened when Peter's mother was sick? Mother in law was sick with the fever. Christ took that fever away from her, didn't he? Yeah. See, so Christ could look on your condition and have compassion for you. You got brothers and sisters feeling sorry for their sins and repenting, and other brothers and sisters talking about, get over it. What? That means the person don't understand. Why well, I say weep with them that weep? So there's going to be some weeping. Yeah. In the truth, okay. We we teach us, hey, soak it up, <laughs> dry your eyes. <laughs> See, we start learning of Christ, looking to Christ, looking to Christ, and there you get your answer. You see. So this brother was very compassionate. He can sympathize with you carry our sorrows and say yet we did esteem him stricken smitten of God and afflicted see so when he suffered how did the wicked look at it wicked of Israel how they look at him like he's evil he was the most high is dealing with him because he's wicked he's an evil man but who was he really suffering for Israel you and I. That's ultimate charity. Christ said, greater love than no man hath than this, that he lay down his life for who? His friend. For his friend. How can we even do that for one another when we got off with each other? <laughs> no. It's false. We have to get that unfeigned love of the brother and the sisters. That comes to us having Christ live inside of us. The spirit of truth. The only way we're going to be able to love our neighbors ourselves is through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Christ living inside of us. You'll see the change in many Israelites' lives. That's what we're supposed to be here for, to change. We're supposed to see ourselves as sick. Not, I'm coming in here, whatever, let's, let's just hear this. No. What's the topic? I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repent. See? We got to see ourselves as sinners, man. Sick. A people that be, need to be made whole. That's what the church consists of. We can't see, come up here and say, oh, I got it. See, I'm whole. I don't need a physician. That's like you going to the doctor and you don't want to tell the doctor why you're there. Why you show up? <laughs> What's the use of going? See? So you expect to go to the doctor being sick to tell the doctor about your symptoms. And you say, well, the doctor got to be compassionate. <laughs> right? Christ is that physician. See? So that's what we're learning about today, Israel. Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai. He was not an evil man, rough and aggressive. See? Nah. He's approachable. You can talk to that brother. And he can work with you. Work with any one of us, right? That's how he was. See? 
fellowship. So let's read on. But he was wounded for our transgressions. So why did Christ get nails put in him and be placed on that cross? For our, our transgression, meaning the nation of Israel went off and went after other gods. So we would need a redeemer, a mediator, an intercessor. It would be this brother we're reading about in Isaiah 53, the Christ. Wouldn't, wouldn't the, the, the brother, the Ethiopian eunuch, which was an Israelite, wouldn't he be reading these scriptures here? Yeah. But he wouldn't know who, who Isaiah was talking about. And the whole time, who was Isaiah talking about? Christ. That was the spirit. How many times you read a scripture and then a class go out and you're like, oh, I was just reading that today. And the understanding come out. That ain't the spirit. <laughs> like, man, I was just reading that scripture. Well, that happened in Acts 8. Right. A lot of it go right over our head. <laughs> he is spiritual, Israel. So it say he was wounded for our transgressions. So we broke the first covenant as the children of Israel. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. So that just... You see in that how this Messiah would come? And he will be, he would come just for the nation of Israel, man, and suffer for us. Is that not love, compassion, and mercy from the Father, giving up his only begotten Son for people that did the most high wrong? Or was this Messiah be about retaliation, threatening Israel? <laughs> When he was reviled, he had reviled back. Did y'all read that? Nope. See? So it's a false Christ being taught out there in this world. We just got to stay with the scriptures. The Lord going to deal with his sheep and feed his sheep. That's right. Let's read on. All we like what? Sheep. Sheep. See, so all Israelite sheep have gone astray. Our whole nation went astray. Astray from who? The Father, Yahweh. We have turned everyone to his own way. So what did our nation get caught up in? Doing what? Idolatry? Fornication? In our own lustful ways. We became corrupt as a people. See? Going off into philosophies and ideologies. That's what Isaiah is talking about. And the Lord, that's the most high, have laid on him the iniquity of us all. So Christ will be our sacrifice. See? Now him is Christ, right? That's right. That's right, brother. Lord put all our iniquities on Christ. That's why he died on the cross for us. We that world he died for. So we should see a different picture when we think about Christ. You understand? But a lot of Israelites will read this and wouldn't understand this. They wouldn't understand it, Israel. That's right. So let's go to Acts 1. So we'll prove the point. Acts 1. All praises. Acts 1 and 1. The former treaties have I made, O Theopolis. So this former treaty that... that First of all, the one who's talking is Luke. See, Luke will be the one who will write the book of Acts through the Holy Spirit. And also he was the one who wrote the gospel of Luke, according to Luke. That was the former treaties. And he's addressing all this to who? A brother named Theophilus. That's as much as we'll say on that. 
Say, the former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Yahawashai began both to do and to teach. So we're going here because we're going to end up in Luke. And Luke going to bring out about the mighty works of Christ and what he taught. So we'll get some familiarity with Christ. It say, unto the day, me all the way up unto the day, what he did and taught, in which he was taken up. What's the taken up? His ascension. So Luke would go into everything that Christ would do, teach, all the way until he ascended. So we got to get all that information. After that, he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. So before Christ would be a, uh, go back to sit at the right hand side of the Father, would he give his apostles commandments? Yep. Yes. So we got to keep that in mind. Because the apostles would be under orders. They couldn't go and do nothing else outside of Christ. Okay? So in the book of Acts, everything the apostles taught, the apostles' doctrine, all that is coming from where? Christ. Right. Christ. They would be under orders. And this class going to lead us up to Pentecost. But you see we're in Acts 1. <laughs> see where we're going? All right. It says, to whom, meaning to his apostles, also he showed himself alive after his passion, meaning after his crucifixion, crucifixion by many infallible proofs. See, so when Christ died and resurrected, did he, did he show himself alive yeah. and prove that he was alive? By what? Showing the apostles his, his, the nail prints, right? His body, he ate with them. Drank with him, right? So he gave him proofs that he, it was him. Being seen of them 40 days. So they will be with Christ for 40 days, right? <clears throat> Being alive. So for 40 days, what would be 10 days later? <clears throat> Pentecost. <laughs> That's where you get, what, you get into Acts chapter 2. So for 40 days he was with them and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. See? So for 40 days he would be going into a bunch of scriptures. Things pertaining to the kingdom that's, be, that's coming to who? Israel. Israel. Somebody prove that? <clears throat> that the kingdom is coming to Israel? Verse 6. There you go. It's a broad question, but you, you're on point, brother. <laughs> so Christ was speaking stuff that, you know, something that John ain't right in the book. You see? But what we get in there is sufficient for us, right? <laughs> so before Israel can get the kingdom, what Israel has to learn? Repentance. Repentance. So now let's go to Luke. Luke 5. All praises. So we got that it was it was Luke who wrote Acts. Now we in Luke. And we're gonna see what the account of according to the account of Luke, what Christ would do and teach, which would be repentance in his doctrine. What is repentance? It's us changing. It's us changing, man. Changing our lifestyle. This is after his death, right? What you mean? Luke 5? Yeah. What you mean by that? After his death. When they wrote, Christ had already died, resurrected, and ascended. Okay, my mind was still in Acts 1. 40 days he commanded. So that's why I asked that question. Right. Well, let the scriptures speak. It, it, it'll probably answer your question towards the end when we deal with Luke. Okay. Acts 1, we in Luke. We'll see what happens. So this Luke 5 and 17, right? And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by 
which were come out of every town out of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. So these scribes and Pharisees, the doctors of the law, I mean, these were rulers that had scriptures, right? And where Christ will be at, many times they'll show up. Why? To repent? Or to spy out things? It cause trouble. <laughs> They'll be up to no good, man. See? Having spirits on them. It says, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. See? See, so many Israelites around. You had the scribes, the Pharisees, the doctors of the law. Christ was there with the, with the Holy Spirit on them, filled with power, and doing many healings. But were the Pharisees and scribes sick? Yeah. But they didn't see themselves. For many of them, they didn't see themselves as sick. See. Verse 18. And behold, men brought in a bed a man which had taken, which was taken with a palsy. Yeah, a sickness or whatnot that affects the whole body. That affects the body. It said, they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. So these brothers in the different accounts say was broke four brothers, man. That took this brother that was placed on what they call like a couch, ancient time and all that, that he couldn't move. So they carrying this brother, seeking different and certain ways, means to get this brother to who? To Christ. Why do you think they would do that? <clears throat> they knew he'd be able to heal them. That's right. They there you go. There you go. <laughs> believe. Now we are. <laughs> they believe in this brother. This brother has the power to heal. This is the anointed one, the Savior. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitudes, they had multitudes of Israelites surrounding Christ. They went upon the housetop and let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Yahweh. And when he saw their what? Faith. 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 He's seen their faith. Faith in who? In him. Because what faith comes with? Works. Works. Actions. Look at that. They can't get to him. Now we're going on, we're going on the <laughs> top of the roof. We're going to get this brother to him. See how they move it? Because they believe, man. So people can say, I believe in the Lord. Watch the behavior. What Lord did we, Israel said they believe in? <laughs> See? <laughs> Let's read on. Verse 20, And when he had sought their faith, he said unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. Is that powerful? Wow. Christ ain't even died yet. So did he have power to forgive sins on the spot? Yep. Where did that authority come from? The most high, man. This man's sins was forgiven on the spot. Who do you think working through Christ? The most high. The Father. But a lot of our people wouldn't understand that. So let's read it. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? See that? See, who is this man? He's an evil speaker. Look what he said. I says, be forgiven him. Only God alone could do that. They don't know the Father is working in Christ, right? Right. And he will always tell them, when you see me, you see my Father. He's doing the works within me. Not that Christ and the Most High is the same entity. <laughs> this is what Isaiah prophesying of right now. Have an eye they can't see, and ears they can't That's hear. That's right. Okay. Just like in John 12. See? And when Yahweh perceived this 22, their thoughts he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it's easier 
to say thy sins be forgiven thee or to say rise up and walk which one would be easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee that'd be easier to say what if he say rise up and walk and then something happened then what you gotta do what would you think <laughs> hmm? cause now he gonna cut him show you Christ will be cutting man watch it he say but that ye may know that the son of man have power where you get this power from his father have power upon earth to forgive sins he said unto the sick of palsy I say unto thee arise and take up thy couch and go into thy house and immediately he rose up before them and took up that where whereon he lay and departed to his own house glorifying God so what took place you check that out go ahead little Phil uh, I was gonna say a miracle. yeah mighty work so he did, he did a mighty work right before the scribes, Pharisees, doctors of the law eyes. Where a brother can't move and Christ say, take up your bed and walk. And now he's moving and grabbing this stuff. What would you think? This is of God. This man of God. What did the brother that was healed do? He glorified who? The Most High, because Christ always in His works He was glorifying who Himself or the Father? Wow. The Father. See, so Christ was given the authority to forgive Israel on the spot, brother. Now is He compassionate and merciful? Yeah. Or does Satan get on us and be like, "Man, I messed up. Like this ain't for me, man. I can't repent no more." We gotta get ourselves together. The Lord calling us in here because he's merciful. He want to give us the kingdom. That's why we're here. This is the mercies and compassion of the Lord. Because we could be blocked out. <laughs> we could be up there acting a fool like the world, cutting up in darkness. Lord waking us up. We ain't, we ain't waking nobody up. It's the Lord waking us up. So this is the mercies of God, man. All praises. See? So it goes, when we read this, we read about the mighty works of Christ. Reading about how he's able to forgive sins before he died. Right? Because he's gracious. We sin about faith. <laughs> it all goes with repentance. Let's continue. Verse 26. And they were all amazed. You know, that multitude, and they glorified God, see, and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. Christ did things before Israelites that no man did before them. A lot of them still wouldn't repent. They have no excuse. See, Christ knew this brother's condition. That wasn't a cool thing to have palsy and all that, right? Christ took him out of that state. But though he would do many miracles, a lot of our people would despise him, call him evil. We don't want to have that spirit, Israel. But we're despising those of Israel that's repentant in Christ and want to get their lives together. Should we want to get our lives together? Get right with the Lord? We all messed up, man. <clears throat> so knowing that we should be more humble. See, more teachable. Right? We have a lot to learn in life, man. <laughs> See, so let's read on. And after these things, he went forth and saw a publican. So a publican was an Israelite tax, Roman tax collector. Named Levi. So this brother is Matthew. Okay, when you read another gospel, the gospel of Matthew. Sitting at the receipt of custom. See that? So who do we pay custom to? The Roman. The Roman Edomites. See, so the publicans were despised by a lot of Israelites. And he said unto him, follow me. And he left all and rose up and followed him. 
And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. See that? So Matthew and Levi invited Christ to the house and made him a feast, brother. Would Christ go? Yeah. And chill out and eat. <laughs> Remember the prophecies of, of how he would be. So just think about him amongst Israel. That's all you got to do. Envision what the prophets were saying, and you will know how Christ got down. You would know his character. And shouldn't we want to put on Christ? Mm, yeah. All right. All right, let's read on. And there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with him. So why did a lot of these publicans and others sit down with Christ? They wanted to get fed. See? Let's read on. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? So what does that show you about the, these scribes again? The Pharisees. Did they look down on Israel? Mm -hmm. They didn't see themselves as sinners. Why are y'all eating with publicans and sinners? That's evil. Negative. <laughs> they got negative spirits on them. This brother just did a great work. And people Israel coming to him. They're like, why are you dealing with them? They was envious and covetous. See, them the wrong spirits that would be on us, man. That's called the works of the flesh. That stuff gonna always cause problems in the church. That's why we gotta constantly mortify ourselves and our members, man. We supposed to be looking to work on ourselves, getting ourselves together and looking in that mirror. This is what this truth is about. It ain't about putting on a show, just having a garment. So we Israel. It's deeper than that. We have to change. And if we humble ourselves and let the Lord work, our whole lifestyle is going to change. We have to be teachable. We have to fellowship. The scriptures say you, you hang around wise men, you'll be a wise. You'll be wise. You won't be a companion of fools, you're going to get destroyed. So when that wisdom come out, when we fellowship it, you let it soak in. Don't fight it, no matter what. Ah, oh, no, nah, I ain't doing that. Then you have a hard time. And then you're going to start despising the words of God. Then it's going to get cloudy, because now Satan at work. Then it's, I don't like it. Then it's, every time I come around, I get corrected. See how Satan started to work? And then we further start doing this. You don't want that. We were supposed to continue in the apostles' doctrine and grow together. See? Let's read, let's read on. Verse 31. And Yahweh answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician. Why he make that statement to them? Because he also told them, I came to have mercy and not sacrifice. Christ was merciful. Go ahead, Brother Z. He's saying this to them because they, they looked the way they perceived Israel. They were looking at him like, why are you eating public and sinners? So they were in their mind thought that they, you know, they weren't sick. That's right. So they seen themselves already wholesome. Yeah, they were whole. They feel like they, they want to be a little above sin. That's right. They don't need no repentance. So why would they come to Christ? So then why would they be there? <laughs> Tagging along. Looking for negativity and problems. Right? A lot of them wasn't really, really wanting to change. Let's read on. They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. So why do you think the publicans and the sinners would come to Christ because they seen themselves as what? Sick. 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 A lot of them held head ailments and all that stuff. Christ be the one feed them, having compassion and merciful. Obviously, these scribes and Pharisees would be different from Christ. Y'all understand? So we should be able to see the difference in teachings and all that, man. We should be able to see the fruits of false prophets and false teachers. 
see that. So now verse 32 says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to what? Repentance. Repentance. See, the scribes and Pharisees, many of them seen themselves seen they self as righteous, but they were self-righteous. Christ came to call sinners to repentance. So was Christ about repentance and his doctrine? Mm -hmm. So what should Israel be hearing? And there it is. Because that's what Christ is about. We need to hear repentance and what it is, what it looked like. Not if we want to hear about the Illuminati and concent uh, concentration camps, martial law. They put you in a concentration camp, okay, and what? They even put us to death. We don't know about repentance. We're in trouble. <laughs> See? So that's what it's supposed to be about, Israel. Us learning repentance. And be about it. See? All praise to the Most High in Christ. The Lord brought us a long way from a lot of that leaven. You've seen us in the past. It's crazy stuff, man. Lord, helping us in all glory and praise go to the Heavenly Father in Christ. See, them devil doctrines is, is deadly. And that's what a lot of our people are following, commandments and traditions of men. You got brothers having men out there in, in, in foul weather, man. In the snow, brother, on corners. You know you can get pneumonia from all that stuff? You got men having brothers hold up poster boards and pictures for hours. And your arms be hurt, man. That's why you see they keep changing arms. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. And that 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 that's a commandment coming from men having them young brothers do that. See? Does that sound like somebody care? Mm -hmm. and ain't, ain't no telling how much money they getting out of the, out of them. That's what you have in Israel. That men talking about they the home of the truth. We getting people off crack. We getting people off meth. See, they glorifying themselves. Christ wasn't like that, right? See. So let's go to Luke. 15. So according to Luke, this is what Christ preached. Repentance. And he healed the sick. It was compassionate. So how do you think the apostles would be? The same way as their head, Christ. We need to follow suit, Israel. You understand? All right. Jay yeah, has some problems. You know, he said, I was thinking about, like, he just said how precious and passionate. Remember the brothers with the uh, Zebedees? It was like on fire down and dealing with it. That's right. And Christ said, so you don't know what man of spirit you're in. That's a good one. Showing like, how passionate he was with Israel. That's a good one. Same thing. He said, I ain't come to destroy men's lives, but to what? Save, save them. See, so Christ will, he will correct his disciples. See? We had it. We had it backwards. <laughs> See. Yeah. So let's Luke 15 and 1. So here we got another account. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. So why did that happen? Because these publicans in Israel and sinners, they was accepting the message of repentance coming from Christ's mouth. Right or wrong? Mm -hmm. They want to get their lives to get in order with the Father. So Christ would teach these brothers and sisters and work with the harlots and publicans. See? Be amongst them, man. Christ wouldn't worry about going out there cussing out Esau. You the devil? On the street, going, what did you might say? <laughs> he was dealing with his people. You see? Now watch this, verse 2, And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, here they go again, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. See? 
No, Christ knew Israel was in a transgression. Why did he, what was his purpose of coming for? To take on Israel's sins. Right? To carry our griefs, our sorrows. That's why he's working with them. What we do, being carnal. <sighs> We get impatient, frustrated with each other, different situations. <laughs> Tired of this. We lack forbearance. See? We come hard and rough and we forget. What about us, man? Do we catch on quick at times? We forget that pride be there. Say, man, I got to work on myself. Let's read on. And he spake this parable unto them. So now Christ going to drop parables on these scribes and Pharisees, brother. And you, had a, you had them sinners and publicans around listening. Say, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, do he not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? So if a shepherd cared for his sheep, would he not do that mm -hmm. to one sheep that went astray? Would he go out and look for it until he find it and have that compassion? So he dropping weight on the scribes and Pharisees because they didn't care about Israel. <laughs> they weren't really true shepherds. You see? Verse 5, and when he had found it, he led it on his shoulder. So he take a shepherd, he found that sheep. And he put that sheep on his shoulders. That's his sheep. What did Isaiah say? All we like sheep have went astray. So he put it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he coming home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which was lost. You see? So once the shepherd will find that sheep, bring the sheep back into the fold, he'll call his friends and neighbors, say, rejoice with me. I found my sheep that was lost. What was the scribes and Pharisees not doing when they seen Israel repenting? Obviously, they wasn't what? Rejoicing. They wasn't rejoicing. They were murmuring. They murmuring. They got spirit songs. Shouldn't they be happy Israel getting their lives together in Christ? Yep. Not them. They got something to say. Because they negative. They got the wrong spirit. See? They got the devil on them, man. So we see Israel repenting, wanting to get in that water, get their lives right. How should we be doing, Israel? Should we be rejoicing? Yes. Embracing one another? Lord bringing Israel back in that fold, man. The kingdom of heaven is about to come, Israel. Why are we tripping? When we all get in a penny, what's the trip about? <laughs> Missing the point. Spirits. That's right. So let's read on. So he's trying to get them to see themselves. <laughs> reading, reading on verse 7. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So is Christ promoting repentance? Yes. See what he's teaching? Luke 13, he taught repentance. He said, if you don't repent, you're going to likewise perish, Israel. So Christ is all about repentance. And he let it be known what happens in the spiritual realm. When Israel is repenting and getting their lives together in Christ. Angels, angels rejoicing. Christ ain't dropping it on these scribes and Pharisees. Y'all got hate and animosity. <laughs> Despising the sheep. Angels are rejoicing in heaven. So what you dealing with? The devil. <laughs> you see? Hold that, get Matthew 18. Matthew 18. So is it beautiful us coming together on the Sabbath day? Mm -hmm. Fellowship and, and, and 
trying seeking to get our lives together. See, we should want to see this. Or should we want to scatter Israel? I said, if, you, if, if we with them, we gather, right? But he that is against Christ, I'm paraphrasing, scatter it. All right. Matthew 18 and 10. So here's the warning. Matthew 18 and 10. It say, take heed. It's a warning that ye despise not one of these little ones. So who would the little ones be in this sense? Israel. That's broad. The children the ones who are repenting. That's right. That believe in Christ. Remember? Because all of them went humble themselves to Christ. So we just say Israel. And say, well, that's all Israel. So these little ones would be the ones that will humble themselves and believe in Christ. So should we despise the believers in Christ? No. What was the scribes and Pharisees doing? Despise. See? That's a warning. Look, for I say unto you that in heaven the angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. So do the angels report, give report to the Most High? That's right, Christ said it. So if the believers are being persecuted and despised, it's known with the Father. <laughs> the little ones, the believers are supposed to be embraced. Verse 11, for the Son of Man has come to save that which is lost. So what did Christ come to do? Save, save, save us, man. We the lost ones. We that sheep that he's bringing back into the fold. That's the body of Christ. That's what's happening. See? Verse 12. How think, how think ye, if a man have a hundred sheep and one of them be gone astray, do he not lead the ninety and nine and goeth into the mountains and seek that which is gone astray? Yes. And if so be that he find it, verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which, which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. See? So the Father is looking to get us humble Israelites that believe in Christ, the kingdom, immortality. We ain't supposed to be looking to destroy one another. So what you think the next verse is going to start going into? How do we correct one another? So we be correcting one another to destroy or to restore? That's what's called love. But if we don't see it, all like this in the chapter, we look at it as hate everything else, brother. <clears throat> this coming out of Christ's mouth, you know it's love coming out of that. Right? right. <clears throat> That's a whole nother class, Deuteronomy 18, 15. Okay? So remember, Christ dropping this parable. Why? Because of the statement or the murmuring of the scribes and Pharisees. So now comes the teaching. <laughs> See? Luke 15. And eight. So now he's going to drop another parable. So he hidden the scribes and Pharisees and all them. Israel with parables. Say, either what woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, does not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? See, so this second parable is similar to the first one. Right? So here you have a sister. She got ten pieces of silver. She lose one piece. She not going to sweep that house to find that one piece of silver? Why? There it is. That one piece of silver is valuable to her. So how did Christ look at the publicans, the sinners, that wanted to hear the message of repentance as what? Value. 
Why did they look at us? Right. See? <laughs> so we don't get discouraged, man. See? We just got to get our lives together in Christ. And we to look at each other as something valuable. See? So we all sick, but we should want help in Christ. And that's why you come to learn and, and, and get that wisdom. It's only gonna make us better. It's like it's like cough syrup, man. You giving it to a child, it's like they. <laughs> but what it does, what what it does in the long run, make them better. The herbs, right? But they look as nasty. <laughs> what about when you have a faithful friend that's there? It's good to say the medicine of life, right? Because they're going to help you get what? That's better. Iron sharpening iron. See, but we have to see it that way. All right, so let's read on. Verse 9. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together and rejoiced, saying, Rejoice with me, for I found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. So Christ wants us to repent. And he's letting us know when Israel is repenting again, the angels rejoice. And why? Because the angels know Israel is getting that kingdom again. The angels want to see us get the kingdom. <laughs> you see? That's cold, man. So we being watched. See? So let's do it, Israel. It's about repentance. You see the message? What Luke is bringing out? <laughs> you ain't hear nothing about the Illuminati and all this other stuff. Right? <laughs> you ain't hear nothing. We got to get land and this and that and get a utopia and this and that. So we can listen to who, brother? You, Sergeant Leroy? Come on, man. The Lord ain't told us to get some utopia. You know, utopia, then now, we, now we're part of a cult. <laughs> That's right. Let's read on. So he's going to drop a third parable. And he said, A certain man had two sons. This Luke 15, 11. So in all this chapter, 15 get into 16. And 16 ain't talking about some hell doctrine. <laughs> when people burning underground and, and, and others in Abraham's bosom in the heavens. See? It's about repentance. So let's read on. The younger them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. So here you have a father, right? He divided to his sons, his two boys, that inheritance. So remember, all this is being based off the publicans and the scribes and what the Pharisees were saying, right? The publicans and sinners and then how the Pharisees looked at this. How Christ eating with them and all this, right? So verse 13 it says, And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there, I meaning in that far country, he wasted his substance with riotous living. So what happened to the younger son? What did he do with the father's inheritance? How did he live his lifestyle? Simple. Wilding out. He wilding out. Cutting up. Living a wicked and sinful lifestyle, Right? He went away far from who? From the father. From his father. So you see what Christ is basing this off of? Who would this younger son be? Hmm? The lost sheep. The lost sheep. This publicans, the sinners, us. Who went away from the father. So let's read on. Verse 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. So now, this youngest son caught adversity and affliction. He got brought low. 
It's saying he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. So now what a younger son had in the field sweet feed swine, man. <laughs> Is that adversity or what? Yeah. Right. Affliction. Man. Now you feeding pigs. It says, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk. That's the bad part. The husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. So now he's hungry. He's looking to get fed because he had adversity. Does it sound familiar? <laughs> Think about us. <laughs> Reading on. Verse 17. And when he what? Came Went to himself. What, is, what do you think that means? He came to his senses. He's like, oh, I'm doing wrong. He came to his senses. Spirit headed. Wait a minute. <laughs> He got to do something because he had a lower state. He's hungry. When he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. So in his mind... What's happening? He ready to do what? Humbling. He humbling himself and what? Yeah. Repent and confess to his father. Went off. I'm not even worthy to be called your son. This is where Paul started getting to the adoption of children, which is actual Israelites. <laughs> we will be those Gentiles, Israel. See? So he's coming to himself. He's ready to repent. That's what the scribes, or I should say the publicans and sinners was doing. They was accepting Christ in his message. That's right. Let's continue. And he arose, this verse 20, and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. So before the son could even reach the father, what did the father do? He came to him. And hugged him and kissed him. So did the father accept his son back? Yep. Was the father compassionate? Mm -hmm. what, that show, what is Christ showing us about our father? That's how he gets down. Okay. See? He gave us the son of the second couple. Yeah, we were looking at the compassions of God, the mercies of God. So why roll on each other? Was Christ like that? No. Why I call it Israel Kunalites and two thirds? And tell them, you going to die. You going to die. That ain't even in the scripture. That ain't even Christ. That's a false Christ. That's Satan. And Satan knows how to transform himself into an angel of light. And we easily say, those brothers is deep and they come with other books. <laughs> books by the, 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 your enemy, the so-called European. See? So we're learning of the Father through Christ. So let's read on. So we'll read verse, we'll read 21 now. And the Son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. See, he's repentant. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe, and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. So look what the father is about. Clothing him, to bring him back to his what? Former state. Is that another form of giving him a also as well, he clothed him. Remember, he was brought low. He's already been forgiven. So now he's getting blessed. He's getting clothed back to his former state. Clothed with righteousness is what it's saying. So what is the Father through Christ doing with us? Getting us ready to bring us back to what? That righteous state. That is back to how we're supposed to be in righteousness. Being clothed so we can rule. Right? 
So remember when we was in Acts 1? It was about us. Before we can get the kingdom of heaven, we got to repent. So the father's looking to feast with this lost son. Verse 23. And bring hither the what? Is that meat? That's good meat. So in the kingdom, we can't eat meat. <laughs> what are we going to feast on? Just berries? <laughs> Brothers and sisters tell me we can't eat meat. How many times Christ in parables and all this, anytime you see him eat meat and feast? Missing Christ again. <laughs> so he said, bring the head of fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was what? Dead. So was the younger son actually dead? Mm -hmm. Was he put in the earth? Mm -hmm. He was dead in sin. That's right. He was dead in what? Trespass and sin. You got that scripture? Because now we're going to get into some understanding on who Paul was teaching. Lost Israelites, deemed Gentile, uncircumcision, get Ephesians 2. <clears throat> These Israelites will be coming back to the fold. Just like us. That's right. But we will be deemed Gentiles. So somebody read that. Ephesians 2 and 1. Ephesians 2 and 1. We're coming back to Luke. 15, as my brother Isaiah say. Hold that. <laughs> Hold on, let me let me get it. We got some time. All right. Ephesians. Two and one. And you hath he quit. See, and you, you Ephesians, these Israelites who lived in Ephesus. It was the Lord that quickened them. To quicken me to make alive. Spiritually. And you have be quickened. Go ahead. Who were dead. Were is past tense. Who were dead. Go ahead. And trespasses and sin. So just like the Ephesians. Look at us. We had no truth. We was living our lifestyle. Living a sinful lifestyle, right? Outside of the Lord. Were we spiritually dead? Yes. Because we were breaking God's commandments. We was living in trespasses and sins. So obviously there has to be a change. Read on. Verse 2. Where in time pass, ye walk according to the course of this world. See that? So how were the Ephesians living? Remember, what time were they living around? The time of the fourth empire. Right. See? That Roman Empire. We, in, we under the same empire. So how were they living? According to what Esau promoted. A wicked lifestyle, right? <clears throat> See? They pro they, you read about it. Romans was pushing on things called Pomona, false <laughs> devil holiday. They came with Saturnalia, another devil holiday. They push sodomy, adultery, fornication, the eating of unclean foods. See? The, the, the promoting of the lack of discretion in dress, all that. Because this so called European is nasty. <laughs> if he could, tell him he'd walk with no clothes on. Look at his statues. Look how he, look how he said Adam and Eve look. I run around with a leaf on. <laughs> Just look what he promotes. This all you gotta do is take a look at it. See? You see how he make men take showers with other men. Same with women. See? We have to change and get ourselves together because like these Ephesians, just like us, we follow the what? Course. Of this, of this world. world. What's a course? A pattern. Right. A way of this evil world. Living in trespasses and sin. So when we get back to God's law, 
we see, okay, what were we breaking? Many of God's commandments. We were spiritually dead. So our praise is he's bring, the Lord is bringing us back into the fold. Just like the Ephesians. And they weren't supposed to be looked upon as foreigners and strangers no more. No, they're the children of God. That's what Paul was telling the, the Jews, which is being a, a circumcision in the synagogue. No, we won now. Lord is making one body out of Jew and Gentile, both groups being Israelites. So either group was not to look down on each other. So let's read on. It says, according to the prince of the power of the air. According to the prince of the power of the air. Who would that be? Satan. Satan. The devil. Satan rules the airwaves. <laughs> Why do you think it's so easy to be influenced off this world, get caught up in wickedness? Satan. So is Satan going to be a, a, somebody looking like a lizard with a fork and <laughs> a red suit on? No, what the next part say? The spirit. The what? The spirit. So Satan is a what? Spirit. A spirit. So what do you think that's on this world? Satan, his spirit, is promoting the wickedness. So you're talking about this child shooting and all that? That's all Satan, of Satan. That's why the Lord tells us to pray, because guess what? The Lord surrounds us with angels. Scriptures say the angels encamp around those that fear him. Are we going to believe that or say, uh... So we might as well go nowhere. Because the whole earth is satanic. See, so these things supposed to happen, Israel. You take discipline out the house, what do you think the, ch the children are going to be like? Monsters. They're going to lack respect. See, lack, lack uh, respect for authority and elders. Now, that, all that child discipline started at home. And talking about take away the belt. Okay, take away the belt, put a gun in their hand. Now the child is threatening the parents. Now they ain't, they ain't the baby no more, they Chucky. <laughs> they was first, they was cuddly. Mm -mm, Chucky now. But we didn't see that coming. But we ain't trusting in God. <laughs> the Lord had that foreknowledge. He tell us how to raise children, right? Right. He know what's right. We don't. We go off emotions. I don't want to hurt the child. How, how hurt him where? You hit him on the backside. What to do with the Lord say? Because the child will rise up and hurt you. See? Now just think about a lot of us. How many of our parents we didn't hurt? Cussed them out, fought them properly, and all type of stuff. That's wickedness. Ain't no glory in that. No. See? We got to deal with the Lord, man. So it's the spirit that is wrong in this world. And Satan knows that he has but a short time. And that's why in Revelation it says, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. Satan has come down. Because he knows he has but a short time. So all this rage and wrath that you see, it's all prophecy. Is Satan because this world is coming to an end. So as we get older and Christ ain't came back, what well, do you think the youth going, the younger generation, they ain't in order with the Lord. They're going to get worse. Look at it. Look at the music they listen to. <laughs> Everything about Molly, Oxycontin, twerking. Right? Cool to be high. Two cups. Two cups. <laughs> People getting high off. Med, uh, 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 cough medicine, brother, and Sprite. Yeah. Buck wild, man. Crew full of drug addicts. Yeah. But they getting paid and exalted. They buying $500 Air Jordan. $500? Come on, man. What are we talking about? They have no priorities. See? The spirit, brother, that work that's working in this world, the devil, 
Now what it say? The spirit that what? That now worketh. And the children of disobedience. So it's the spirit of Satan that's in our people causing them to be disobedient to God and his ways. That's how we work. See? So it's the spirit out there. Now who promotes this spirit? This world. So-called European. He backs the spirit. He promotes it. So he wants to see more blood, violence, murder, rape, robbery. So I ain't got a place for that. Now I'll come to the prison. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll make some more money. See? Read on, brother. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. So wasn't we, like Paul included himself, part of that world cutting up, acting a fool, our behavior was worldly, we were blinded. Wasn't Paul blinded? He had the scriptures, but he persecuting and killing the believers in Christ. <laughs> what spirit you think he had on him? Satan. But did he get his life changed, turned around? Yep. Was Christ merciful towards him? He talked about it. And he thanked Christ for putting him in the ministry. When Paul came out that water, did he come out a wet murderer? No. See? That's what they say. See, the water ain't going to change you. We didn't say that. <laughs> water baptism is a part of the gospel. It's a part of the ministry. That's what we're saying. Continue, brother. It says, In the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. See that? That's heavy. So think about that young brother in Luke 15. Riotous living. He was, he was acting wild, cutting up. Right? So what was he doing? Because you got a word in there that's very potent called fulfilling. He was lusting. See, so when you fulfilling something, it's Israel, see, fulfilled, fulfilling, we get thrown off. That means it's done. No, we was carrying out something. Whatever came to the mind, we was doing. We carried it out. What a club at. What's popping? See? <laughs> we was in it. Whatever this world was promoting. So now it's cool for young sister to be strippers, right? That's what it's about? Young sisters being strippers? How'd that come about? Who they looking up to now? See? Look at this. She talking about blood bottom shoes. Gang banging. Right? Then 21 Savage. He's a savage. What he talking about? <laughs> Killing and murder. See what they see? <laughs> Read on, brother. It says, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You see that? So by nature, all saying to these Ephesians, just like us, we was out there in that world, we were deemed the children of God's wrath. If he didn't bring us in the fold through Christ, what was going to happen? We will see wrath. We will see the Lord's wrath at Christ's second coming. Read on. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. What is that telling us right there? See, the Most High, the Christ is very rich in mercy. So are we talking about the mercies of God. He's rich in it. So that means he, he's very, very, very merciful. So it says, but God, that's the Father, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, the Jew and Gentile, Israel. Read on. Even when we were dead in sin. Even when we were dead in sins. Spiritually dead, right? Read on. Have quickened us together with Christ. By grace, ye are saved. So we're dealing grace. with the grace of God. It's a gift. 
See? That's what this parable going into in Luke 15. <laughs> the grace and mercies of God. Whereas the scribes and Pharisees, they weren't, they weren't merciful. They were actual thieves. Didn't they, uh, what did it say, uh, uh, how they dealt with the widows? Devour. They would devour Devour widows' homes. Uh, they'd be in the temple, making the temple a den of thieves. Mm. But they'd preach, thou shalt not steal. <laughs> they'd move, honor thy father and mother to the side and come with korban. Right. These dudes was off the chain, man. <laughs> but you had a lot of them would repent too. So let's go back to Luke 16 or 15. So that's, we went there for that dead part. Luke 15, everybody clear? Yes, sir. In 23, thanks. And bring, we're at 24. For this my son was dead and is alive again. Meaning quickened, right? Right. He was lost and is found. And they began to make to be married, meaning the feast. Because here's his son coming back to the father, coming back in the fold. See, as a son of the Most High. <laughs> Being once lost and dead spiritually. Now his elder son was in the field. And, he, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. So the oldest son, he don't understand what's happening. Who do you think that will represent? The Pharisees and the scribes. Right. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was what? Angry. See that? Why would the Angry. older brother be mad at that? That's that hate. That covetousness, that envy. Shouldn't the older brother rejoice? Yeah, your little brother. See? <laughs> so it's a beautiful thing when Israel is repenting, man, and getting their lives in order with Christ. So rejoicing. So let's read on. And when he was angry, he would not go in. Look at it. See his attitude? I ain't going in to feast. <laughs> Therefore came his father out and entreated him. So now the father got to come out and say, come on in. And he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son was come, which have devoured thy living, with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead, and is alive again, and was lost and is found. You see the point of the parables? <laughs> this is supposed to be a rejoicing. Israel is repenting fellowshipping and getting themselves together in Christ. Israel changing, preparing themselves for the kingdom of heaven. That's not supposed to be despised and looked upon as something uh, uh, evil. See, this is a good thing. So it goes to show us, Israel, many of us were spiritually dead. We're coming back to life through Christ. So we have to remember that. We was in the place where a lot of our people were spiritually dead. So we have to be compassionate, right? Patient. Right. Patient with the Father, patient with one another. It's about repentance. It's about repentance. This is what Luke was promoting. You understand? So what you think an Acts going to be about? <laughs> when the dead. apostles go out and teach, there you go. And it should never change. The gospel is never supposed to change, Israel. You see? So let's go to Luke 24. So remember we was in Acts 1? All right. So in Acts 1, it said how Luke would 
write his account about what Christ would do in his works and teach all the way up until the time he what? Ascended, ascended back to the Father. But before he would ascend back to the Father, would he give commandments to his apostles? Mm -hmm. So in Israel be in John 15, 14, or 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. They running straight to where your friends at, brother. They looking to condemn Israel and make, make them look bad. So they'll set you up. They have a question and they know you don't know your nationality. What's your nationality? And they know the camera is there. <laughs> They're already setting you up with loaded questions. See? It's wrong, man. So we have, that has to be repented of. So this is Luke 24, right? And 36. And as he does spake, Yahweh Shai himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. So this is after his resurrection. Right, right Charles? The answer coming across. <laughs> but they were terrified and affrighted, supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. So what is Christ doing? Giving them proof? Infallible proof. Infallible proof. That's right. This is what Luke was talking about to Theophilus. He said that it is, it, it, it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit have not flesh and bones as ye see me have. So did they crucify a spirit on the cross? No. Did they crucify a man that looked like a rainbow of colors? No. Because no. people say Christ was a rainbow of colors. Who have you seen walk on the street look like a rainbow, man? <laughs> oh, it was olive. Which one, the green or the black? <laughs> so verse 40, And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and his feet, and while they yet believed not for joy, so they excited. And wonder, he said unto them, Have ye here any what? Maybe. <laughs> and they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. More infallible proofs. That is him. See? Because he would eat with them, man, and chill. They knew this brother, how he was when he walked. Remember, they was with him. They are eyewitnesses, brother. So who are we supposed to follow in here? These brothers that's teaching Christ. Let's read on. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, first five books, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. So Christ would go into the five books of Moses, or the prophets, the Psalms, which were written by, many of them written by David. A lot of them spoke of who? Christ. Christ. So Isaiah promoted Christ. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, David. So they're not our Redeemer. <laughs> Jeremiah, Zechariah, they were promoting Christ. You see? So what did we go into today? According to them prophets. Where did we go? Isaiah 53. What was Isaiah 53 talking about? About Christ. How he would be despised, rejected. How he would suffer. Down the cross for us, right? Be wounded for our transgressions. Isaiah also talk, talked about the resurrection and ascension of Christ. So all that we went over, Christ would go over with his apostles. Now the next verse says, Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Powerful. Did Peter and them knew, know the scriptures? <clears throat> you got a scripture for it? Like the new scriptures? Yeah. Huh? My who knew the scriptures? Peter, Andrew, Nathaniel. 
Yeah. Because I'm giving out hints. <laughs> John 1. John what one. you got, uh, Phil? Yeah, when you said John 1. Where is it at? <laughs> John 1 and uh, 45. What'd that say? <coughs> I talked about Philip. It said, um, Philip findeth Nathaniel and said unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Bingo. So then why did Christ have to open their understanding up to the scriptures? What is that talking about here? Yeah. In Luke 24. Because hmm? they would get the Holy Spirit in what? Acts 2? Go ahead, what are you going to say? Sorry, Jay. He gives an increase. I like that. What do you mean by that? He giving them the increase. What did they understand? Scriptures. Which ones? Isaiah. Isaiah. Isaiah what? Are you there? There you go. The ones we was trying to get understanding of. <laughs> Isaiah 53, Psalm 16, Psalms 22. Remember, they would be like, you're not going through that. He'd be telling them that the Son of Man got to suffer and things written by the prophets got to come to pass. They didn't understand that part. So later on, Christ would give them that portion, right? Because after a while, he sent them on that mission. They got to teach what? Those things, those scriptures that we just been going over. That's all Israel need. <laughs> so should it change? What happened in Acts two? Remember we getting the Pentecost, Lord willing. They went in them scriptures we went over. How powerful were those scriptures? It was so powerful. How many Israelites repented? Three thousand souls, man, and got in that water. Then you read later on in Acts, what is it, 4 and 5, 5,000 repented. So the gospel started to spread like what? Wildfire. Wildfire. See? <laughs> this is what it's about. We either going to get with it and repent, or say, ah, I'm tired of hearing this, and be into some other doctrine in that world. See? So let's read on. Verse 46. And he said unto them, Thus it is written. That's how Christ got down. And thus it behooved Christ, meaning it was necessary for the Messiah to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Did the scriptures promote that? Yes. Jonah promotes it, right? Isaiah, we named him. <clears throat> See? David in the Psalms. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name, meaning the power and authority of Christ. Among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Is that powerful? So Israel would be scattered in all nations according to Deuteronomy 28, right? Right. And in that scattering, what would Israel have to learn about? They would have to learn about repentance. Learn about repentance in order to get forgiveness of sin. And in Israel learning about repentance all across across the globe, would they learn Isaiah 53? Yeah. Psalms 22 and Psalms 2. A lot of these brothers and don't understand those scriptures. That's why they all go to them. And if they go to them, you'll see they talking about they think it's talking about them. <laughs> and it's not. Why do the heathen rage? Oh, see, that's why the white man come at us, raging. That's talking about Christ when he would die on the cross. <laughs> see? So what we hear in Israel is the right thing. That's right. Now, is Christ giving them a commandment? Yes. Mm -hmm. What type of commandment? On what they supposed to preach, right? right. <laughs> Could they detour from that? No. So when you see a detour, bell, uh, what they say, red flag should be going up. You don't even entertain the stuff. 
Israel debate out on the streets, youngsters. Still want to debate with the comedic community. For what? Talking about some rape and all For what? But see, Satan know that they ain't had a gospel. <laughs> see? Let's read on. <clears throat> so it say, Repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So what would happen at Jerusalem at Pentecost? They'll receive the Holy Spirit, the promise. What would these many Israelites hear about? You said what would they hear about? Right. What did Peter and the apostles tell them? Because they said, men and brother, what should we do? Repent. There it is. See? He's under orders. Verse 48. And ye are witnesses of these things. So what did the apostles witness? We're not talking about Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> That's another devil doctrine right there. That's some Masonic stuff, man. Go ahead, bro. They were witnesses of how Christ will suffer and how he will rise again the third day. That's right. That's right. And that's what they would go out and supposed to preach. And Paul himself would get to see the ascended Christ, right? So let's read on. And behold, I... Send the promise of the Father upon you. What would that be? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. There it is. Comforter. That will come from the Most High through Christ. He would give the apostles the gift to speak in many languages to many Israelites, right? Mm -hmm. So do we need to learn Hebrew? No. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen in Acts chapter 2. He said, I, he said, Behold, I send the promise of the Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be do endued with power from on high. So could the apostles go tarry in Jericho? Where they had to go chill at? Jerusalem. For how long? Until they would be endued with power from on high. That's right. And that happened in what? On the day of Pentecost. So Luke 24 leads us into Acts. Because Luke is the one who wrote Acts. <laughs> okay, I just said 50 days. 40 days, but they were supposed to meet him in Galilee, right? I mean... He was with them for 40 days so, before he ascended. So then it was 10 days later. Later. Okay. From Acts 1 to Acts 2. Okay. That's where you get pent. Mm -hmm. All right. So was that a commandment there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh, Israel? Yeah. yeah. They couldn't go nowhere. They had to go and chill and wait. They had to wait, man, for the Spirit to come upon them. They would be on a mission now. And this mission would be of the Most High in Christ. It wouldn't be of man. So the Apostles' Doctrine is not of man. This movement is not of man. And that's what Gamaliel was saying. Listen, he was telling the scribes and Pharisees, let them alone. Because if this be a man, this council, it's going to fall. But if it be of God, we're going to find ourselves fighting against God. See? Then he started giving up accounts about how men were self-willed in Israel, trying to rise up against the Roman government. Got slaughtered. So I'll read on. It says in... And he led them out as, as far as to Bethany. And he lifted up his hands and blessed them. All praises. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into where? Heaven. What did you say? Heaven. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Shamo? Uh, we used to say it. Shamayo. Shamayo, yeah. <laughs> so what would he fulfill right there with scripture alright go ahead brother one of the psalms is David uh, Psalm the, the 110th Psalm Psalm 110 and 1 that's right it's also in Daniel 7 as well. that's right so where is Christ at the right hand of the most high God alive in the heavens in the spiritual realm is he at work now 
Yeah. Yeah. Look what we're hearing. See? And they worship him. So can we worship the Son of God? Yes. yes. All right. And return to Jerusalem with joy. Great. Great joy. Wait a minute. He just left them. Why would they return back to Jerusalem with joy? By the show of hands. He just left them, man. Go ahead, little Phil. Then something to go to Jerusalem and wait there. Okay, they, he left them though. <laughs> Is he coming back? Is he coming back? Or they seen him. What? They, they seen him. They seen him. Well, it says uh, in verse 49, And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. So they was under orders and commandments to obey the Lord and wait for the promise. Okay, but he left them. Why are they so happy? They feel with great joy. See? Because they're about to get their promise. This is the Holy Spirit. Okay. I was going to say that you gave them the understanding. You opened up. You got understanding. Christ gave them understanding. Okay, they witnessed that him going back to the Father. You know, that's great joy. You know, seeing the Lord going to the heavens. <laughs> he was close. He's there. He left them. That's their Savior, brother. That's their Savior, brother. Say he coming back. Yeah. He's he coming back in the spirit. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Okay. John 16 and 21. Make it quick. Um, a woman when she is in travail has sorrow. Because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of child, she remember no more anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye and ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man take it from you. So he was that, that scripture is thinking, I was talking about Jesus Christ going back to the Father. When they seen everything, they had the sorrow of heart. But when he was going to go back to the Father, he said he was going to have great joy. Well, that go with, when he died, they would, they would feel sorrowful because he, the Savior died in Luke 24. But they would see him again because he would resurrect. And that's where the joy would be at because they would see him again. So see? is that all for Right. That's going until they would see him again alive. Okay. We said they going to Jerusalem with great joy. He left them. But did he really leave them? No. Oh no. So how do we know? He would be with them still, right? Confident. What'd you say? Confident. That's right. He would be like you was dead. Uh, just yeah. you said in spirit he'd be with them. See? They knew he would still be with them in the spirit and form of the comforter. Still working through them. So all the works they would do in the act, in acts and all that, who would be there with them? Christ. See? So is Christ at work? Yeah. Yeah. In the form of what? The comforter, the spirit of truth. That's what we hear. And no lies are the truth. That's why we got to teach and break it down like these brothers did. Sisters supposed to have that spirit too. Because the Lord say he gives spirit to his sons and daughters. See? That's why we were saying that. That's when you were saying the Holy Spirit. But he would be still with them. That's why they're going like he ain't really never left, left us. So when they would perform the mighty works, who would they give glory to? They say, we ain't did nothing. Shehawashai. And he would bring things back to their remembrance, right? Who do you think hit Paul? Christ. So is he alive, brothers and sisters? Yeah. Yeah. So we're working, man. We're working. <laughs> that's what it's about. And that's why it says, and, and we're continually in the temple praising, praising and blessing God. Amen. Mark 16, tell us what the deal is, right? Yes, sir. Mark 16. <clears throat> I 
I'll just read this real quick. Okay. Uh, Mark 16. In 19. So it says, this is Mark 16 and 19. It says, so then after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth. And preach. Now this is Mark talking about after they would have the Holy Spirit. The apostle would go forth and preach, right? Right. Preach what? Repentance. Everywhere. The Lord working with them and conform, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. See, so whatever the apostles preached, which was repentance, Christ was behind it. Having miracles take place because he'd be confirming the doctrine. See, so will what they preach be of man? No. So this is all praises. Okay, that's what it's about. The movement continues till we get on up out of here. So it's about repentance, us getting our lives changed, because that's what Christ was pushing and promoting. Repentance, right? And he's a whole total different brother from what this world engages. See, what you see Israel out there doing, a lot of them is not Christ. Okay? So before we just end the class, we make a uh, statement from last class. was brought up about Abraham and his age. So it had to be some correction. Um, God said that Abraham didn't see Isaac or Jacob. So we know Isaac was born what at a, when Abraham was a hundred, and then Abraham was one seventy five. So then Isaac reached forty, he had Rebecca, right? He got married. So Abraham will be one forty, and then Isaac had Jacob and Esau when he was sixty. So that's twenty years later. So it'd be what one sixty. So Abraham would be still around for about fifteen more years. So we want to, I want to repent on that, but as far as Jacob touching and being on Abraham's bosom. <laughs> That's added to the word. Okay. So everybody clear? All right. So with that, we're going to do this communion, Israel. All praises to the Most High Christ.